This is Shuttle Launch Control, and we're just 10 seconds away from resuming the countdown for the launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis today. Three, two, one, mark. And we are at T-minus nine minutes and counting, and the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. NASA Test Director Jeff Spaulding is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre-launch commands as Atlantis is prepared for launch on Shuttle Mission STS-110 about eight and a half minutes away on a return mission to the International Space Station. PLT, OTC. OTC, PLT, go ahead. Configure essential buses to fuel cells for your checklist. OTC, PLT, that can work. T minus eight minutes and counting. And pilot Stephen Frick is now flipping switches in the cockpit to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. OTC, PLT, essential buses connected to fuel cells. Copy. Coming up on the orbiter access arm retraction, that should be happening in the next few seconds. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle. It can be returned to position within just a few seconds if necessary. T-minus seven minutes and counting. Coming up in the next few seconds, the orbiter test conductor, Teresa Annulus, will give pilot Stephen Frick the go-ahead to perform the APU pre-start procedures. Looks like we've had an RH glitch. All three of our standby steps have uh, suffered three consecutive sync errors. I copy that. TLT OTC, perform APU pre-start. And GLS, we're going to hold it five minutes. TLT, APU pre-start, didn't work. GLS, hold the clock at five minutes. GLS copies. Can clock will hold it T minus five minutes. And LPS NTD, what's the impact on this? It's a possible post launch impact. Uh, it could have erroneous data. We could reload the FEPS. Uh, we need to talk to SP. SP entity. This SP. Yeah, we had uh, consecutive sync errors on the uh, standby FEPS, which means we had a glitch in the RF. Uh, option is to reload the RF, uh, three standby FEPS. Okay, how long would that take you to do that? A couple of minutes. Okay. And, the and if your recommendation is to uh, reload the FEPS, then we do need to hold to do that, correct? Okay. Okay, stand by. We need to hold because if they uh, reset, GLS has to do some work, too. Okay, understood. And GLS, what's up to hold at five, correct? Yeah. That's correct. And we will be holding at T-minus five and minutes. We're going to go ahead and give them a go to proceed with that reload. Copy. Okay, NTD, you want to give LPS a go, and if they resync, then we don't have to take any action in the GLS. Okay, I copy that. And central personnel, we're holding at T minus five minutes, and LPS, you have a go for your reload and let us know when you're complete with that. And LPS can work. OTC, PLT, APU pre starts complete, three great talkbacks. Copy. And we are reloading the launch processing system software right now to ensure that everything is operating properly. Uh, this will be done in the next few minutes. Uh, we have four and a half minutes remaining in our window at this time. We anticipate that this work will be done in time for us to pick up the countdown in time to proceed with launch. And Houston Flight NTD. 
NTD Houston Flight 212. Okay, once we pick up, we'll be looking for an update on our locks going back whole time from you. Flight copies, and we will be ready. Copy. SB Launch Director 212, is there any verification we're going to need to do after LPS reloads? No, other than a uh, confirmation from them that their reload was successful. Okay. And we're currently standing by for that work to be completed. We have about three and a half minutes remaining in our window. And LPS entity, looking to get a status update here. Yeah, it didn't work at this time. Okay, just want to make you aware we're about two minutes and 30 seconds remaining in our window. Copy. And entity launch director, you're not working on any other issues, right? No other issues at this time. Okay. And again, uh, we had a launch processing system take a uh, slight glitch, uh, may have uh, uh, given us some erroneous data. We're working that right now uh, to verify that uh, the launch processing system, the LPS, is up and running again. Uh, we have about a minute, 45 seconds remaining in our launch window today. LPS NTD 212. We're hurrying. Okay, I guess we need an estimate here. Hopefully less than a minute. Okay, we're at 50 seconds right now. With SPE NTD just want to re-verify we don't have anything to do in GLS when we get back up here with LPS, correct? It will be go once LPS gives us a go. The LPS is go. Okay, and SP, are you go at this time? I'm go. Okay, launch director entity. Okay, and LPS, you got a good load. You're That's you're firm. confirmed. Okay, I'll copy. Entity, you're clear to proceed. Copy that, and we will resume the count. Jill, let's pick up the clock and your mark. Three, two, one, mark. And we are at T minus five minutes and counting. And we have a go for APU start. Are you ready for We have a go. The ROC. Go ahead. Configure here. Copy. And Houston Flight, be looking for lock stream back update, please. NTD, Houston Flight, update. Zero minutes, colon, one, one, eleven seconds. Copy, zero minutes, eleven seconds. Good copy. T minus four minutes, 15 seconds, and counting. Yeah, see, AP starts complete, three and high green. Stop. 
again, the primary objective of this shuttle mission is to rendezvous and dock with the orbiting International Space Station to deliver the first segment of the 356-foot-long truss. This segment is considered the second most complex station component next to the Destiny Lab with over 400,000 parts. T-minus 3 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. And a final test of the flight control surfaces is being conducted. This is a program pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the engines and the other flight control surfaces. And the aero surfaces and the engines are being gimbaled at this time. Again, this is a final engine check before launch. T minus three minutes and counting. And everything is looking good for launch this afternoon. Everything on board Atlantis is operating without problem. OTC. OTC, go ahead. Clear caution warning. Memory, verify no unexpected errors. Purge of the main engines is complete, and the gaseous. The warning is cleared, no unexpected errors. The gaseous oxygen vent hood is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. Atlanta, OTC, close and lock your visors and initiate OT flow. And look. T minus two minutes and counting. TLS is go for ET LH2 pressurization. All systems continue to be go. We're about 90 seconds from launch of Atlantis. And at this time, the liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is reported to be at its proper flight pressures. T-minus, one minute and counting. And everything continues to look good for launch of Shuttle Atlantis from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. T-minus 50 seconds, and we're transferring to orbiter internal power at this time. Atlantis is now running off its three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for all the sequence start. Atlantis onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds in count. T minus 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. We have a go for the initial start. Six, Off of the spatial Atlantis setting in place, Eastern to the space station's back. Roger, rolled Atlantis. Houston's now controlling Atlantis, rolling on course toward the International Space Station. Atlantis already traveling more than 300 miles per hour. Altitude now two miles, downrange about one mile from the launch pad. Three engines on board Atlantis have crawled back to two-thirds throttle to prepare the spacecraft to pass the air with maximum ground pressure and go supersonic.
25 seconds since launch. A flight controller will be standing by for burnout and jettison of the twin solid rockets. That coming up uh, in just about 10 seconds. Solid rocket booster jettison. Altitude now 30 miles. Speed 3,070 miles per hour. Downrange 40 miles. Atlantis uh, two orbital maneuvering system engines firing now. They're fired for about a minute 16 seconds to assist a boost of the main engines for the shuttle as it continues en route to orbit. Atlantis Houston, you are two engine Tau. Update to your NOCOM mode boundaries. Press to ATO 10.8. Press to MECO 15.5. Single engine press to MECO. 17.9, negative Ben 15.9, and you are launched in plane plus 2.5. Okay, Scorch, copy. We, we copy all those words. Those calls uh, indicating uh, that Atlantis could reach a transatlantic landing in Spain if required. All systems go, however, for Atlantis. Three engines continue to operate full throttle. Speed now 4,100 miles per hour, altitude 53 miles. Downrange 104 miles from the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis is approaching four minutes since launch now, altitude. 60 miles, its trajectory can beginning to level off as Atlantis accelerates through the upper fringes of the atmosphere. It'll triple its speed over the next four minutes. Atlantis Houston, negative return. Copy, negative return. That call indicating that Atlantis has gained too much speed and uh, too far downrange to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of a problem. All systems continue to operate well, three engines at full throttle. The shuttle speed now 5,500 miles per hour. Altitude 63 miles, 185 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. Five minutes since launch. Three minutes, 23 seconds till cutoff of the main engines. Houston, press to ATO. Copy, press to ATO. That call to Atlantis indicates that it could reach a lower than planned but safe orbit on only two engines if required. All three engines continue to operate well. Speed now 7,200 miles per hour. Altitude 67 miles. 285 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis Houston, single engine ops three. Copy, single engine ops three. So Atlantis continues to gain speed and altitude. It's abort options uh, multiply. I get that uh, calling that it could reach a abort landing on only one engine if required. However, all systems continue to operate well. Three engines at full throttle. Speed now 8,700 miles per hour. Atlantis Houston, single engine Zaragoza 104. And that an indication that the shuttle could land in Zaragoza, Spain on only one engine if necessary. Altitude 67 miles, 411 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis Houston, press to Miko. Copy, press to Miko. Just under two minutes to cut off of Atlantis's main engines. That call indicating that it could reach that cutoff uh, even if an engine failed. All engines continue to operate well. Altitude now 66 miles, speed 10,500 miles per hour.
Atlantis Houston, single engine press 104. Copy, single engine press 104. Net call indicating that Atlantis could reach its planned orbit on only one engine if required. Seven minutes, 15 seconds since launch. Uh, just over a minute to cut off of the main engines. The engines will begin throttling back uh, to prevent the shuttle from experiencing forces in excess of three times that of Earth's gravity. Atlanta speed now 14,450 miles per hour. 680 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. About 30 seconds to cut off of the main engines for Atlantis. Speed now 16,000 miles per hour. Seventeen thousand miles per hour, standing by for cutoff of the main engines. The booster officer confirming main engine shutoff right on time for Atlantis. Speed now seventeen thousand six hundred miles per hour at uh, coast toward a engine firing that uh, will take place. About a half an hour from now. Atlantis Houston, we see a nominal MECO. Ohms 1 not required. We'll meet you in the post Ohms 1 procedures. Well, good, Scorch. We'll see you there.